Oh, praise the Lord. So glad to have you here with us once again that God's got a plan. I believe that the Lord really have a, a beautiful word for you. I want to bring to you a series and that this week and next week. I, I want to do this in two parts because I believe that, you know, many of us, as a matter of fact, this is the month of December. We're about to go into the new year. And I think it's so very important that as we go into the new year, you know, many of us are reflecting on our li over our lives in reference to what we've lived this year. And, you know, there's some things I'm sure all of us could have done better. So I'm hoping that these next two weeks, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to receive something that's going to enable us and help us, let's just say, step into the new year a little bit stronger, a little bit more purposed and whatnot. And, you know, all things are working together for the good for them that love God in a call according to his purpose. So we realize his purpose is his will. And he wants you, the viewer, to be successful. He wants you to be able, let's just say, to step into that quality of life that he wants, let's just say, all of the saints of the Most High God to live. We are called to be more than conquerors. So I don't know what you're dealing with today and what you might find yourself wrestling with today, but I'm here to tell you today that there's a way out, and that way out is in Christ Jesus, and we realize his word is so very important for us to be able to make that happen today. So I really want to, let's just say, I want to start off just letting you know that in spite of what you're dealing with, you're going to make it. In spite of how difficult, in spite of how bad, you might be dealing with something in your body in reference to a sickness, a disease, or maybe an addiction. Well, I believe that God is able, and not just able, but he's willing to bring a brother, a sister who is committed, someone who is determined, someone who is diligent. I'm believing today that God is able to turn your situation around. So bear with me, sit with me tonight, today, and just allow the Lord to speak into your spirit. I believe he's going to give you some foundation principles, some things that's going to really help you go forward, all right? And you might not need it today, but you just might need it tomorrow. So stick with us today, and let's just see what God has to say to us, all right? Praise the Lord. So coming out of the book of Galatians, chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 says this. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free. And don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians 6 and 9 says this, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, for in due season you shall reap if you don't faint, if you faint not. So it's very important that we can't allow ourselves to get tired. You know, many of us, we might get stuck right in the middle. If you, if you were just to keep on pressing, that is a saying in the church, you just got to keep pressing for the blessing. All things are working together for the good. And we can't get weary in well-doing. Father, we just ask your blessing right now, Lord God, as we would proceed now in, the, in, the, in, the, in this message, Father God, in reference to how to be an authentic, how to live an authentic life how to live an authentic life. I pray, Father, that you would bring forth a word this week, Father God, that would cause us, Lord God, to be stirred up in our spirit. Help us now, Lord God, to receive this now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And that's what this is about, because you can be sitting in the right place, and the word can be coming across, but we can be caught up in something else. We can be looking at our problem, our circumstances, or our situation, and it can be a distraction, and it can keep us from getting that something that can enrich, empower, something that can turn our situation around. 
So bear with me, as I said, and understand my theme for tonight is how to live an authentic life. What am I saying? In essence, what I'm saying is how to be your true self. How to be your true self. You know, you don't want to, you know, the Bible says you don't want to come with a, a form of godliness. You don't want to be a counterfeit Christian. You want to be your real, your true self, your real self. Why? And it's going to take some, let's just say, some persevering. In other words, in order to make that happen, in order to see your true self, you're going to have to persevere. You're going to have to be able to go through some stuff. And, and all of us are going to deal with some stuff in this life. I'm calling it stuff. Whatever your stuff is, it's your stuff. And I want you to know tonight, God says he'll never give you more than what you can bear. And he will always leave you a way of escape. And I'm here to tell you tonight, your way of escape, first of all, let me give you point one. I'm going to talk to you now about the essential ingredients, the essential ingredients for living the authentic life. Now, what are the essential ingredients? Number one, you have to persevere. Persevere in what? Persevere in the word. You have to have perseverance. My brothers and sisters, you have to be able to persevere. Now, what am I talking about when I say persevere? Perseverance. Perseverance is a steady persistence in a course or of action, a purpose or a state especially in spite of difficulties and obstacles or discouragement. In other words, I will not be moved. You will not be moved. And we have to look at those different things that have caused us to stop, to get stuck in certain situations that we know, oh my God, had I kept going, I, I, I would have seen that change come so much sooner. So let, let's look at this. Now, that first essential ingredient for living the authentic life, that first thing is, one, you have to persevere in the word. You have to persevere in the word. Now, look at what John 8 and 31 says. Then Jesus said to the Jews that believed in him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. If you what? If you continue, if you persevere in the word. And those of us, you know, who are in the church, in the body of Christ, believers, we have to be able to persevere in the word. In other words, I'm not going to get tired reading this word, spending time with this word. Joshua 1, I believe around the 8 verses says that we're to meditate upon this word of God. If you want to have good success, you have to even, you have to meditate. That's going beyond memorizing scripture. But you have to persevere in the word of God. Look, look at that next verse, that 32nd verse says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See, many of us are not free because we're not operating in the truth. And it's so very important because it's the truth, and only the truth that's going to set you free. Oh, free at last, free at last, good God Almighty, I'm free at last. Can you say that today? My brothers, my sister, can you say today that you're free? And that's what this is about, knowing that God has put some things in place. He has set us up so we can be successful, so that we can be at that place in our lives where we can say life is worth living. Oh, I'm here to tell you today that all things can work together for the good when you're persevering in the word of God. Now, let me give you that second essential ingredient. That second essential ingredient is we have to persevere in the faith. You have to persevere in the faith. Oh, yeah, things are going to come up against you that's going to try you, that's going to try to, let's just say, wear you down, make you think that you're not going to make it, make you think that, you know, you're not good enough. But I'm here to tell you today that if you can just hold on, if you can just keep believing God at the promises that's in his word, you just have to persevere in the faith, my brothers and sisters. In Luke 22, Luke 22 and 31 says this, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. 
Are you hearing me? See, in other words, you know, you have to be able to stand in that faith. Why? Because the devil is after you. If he was after Paul and Simon, well, we know Simon is, is, is Peter, excuse me, Peter. I want you to know he's after you. He's the same devil. Might be using a different trick, a different scheme, but the real deal is he want to break you down, and he want to sift you like we. But look at what the 32nd verse says. But I have prayed for you. See, Jesus is saying, I have prayed. He have, he's interceding for you today that your faith fail you not. My God, my God. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me this evening that your faith would fail you not? We all have to, let's just say, take a look at our faith and where we're at in reference to our standing with God. How, how well are we standing up under pressure? How well are we dealing with our trials and our tests? How, how strong am I in the faith? You know, and that's what this is about. See, in order to be strong in the faith, I have to be strong in the word of God. See, it's that word of God that's going to build my faith. And then when I am tested, when you are tried, you're going to be tried and you're going to be tested. And I want you to know all of these things that we're coming up against is designed to break you down and to really show you where you're at when it comes to faith. So you have to persevere in faith in spite of what it looks like. Scripture says we learn to walk by faith and not by sight. See, and too many of you are looking at what you're dealing with more so than dealing with the spiritual principles and dealing with this word of God that's going to enable you to keep on standing. The Bible says after doing all that you can do, keep on standing. And I don't know what you're up against. I don't know the pressures. I, I don't know the schemes and the tricks of the enemy that you might be confronted with today. But I'm here to tell you today, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And if you look back over your life at how he brought you out of some other stuff, that's right, you're still standing. He brought you out of some other stuff. He's a faithful God, and he's committed to his word. He's committed to the promises, and I'm here to tell you, he's committed to you, Lord Jesus. So whatever it is you're going through tonight, today, I'm here to tell you right now, all you have to do is shake it off. Are you hearing me? If you can just shake it off, my God, my God. And you might have been stuck in this stuff for a while, but it's, it's a choice you have to make. I'm talking to you tonight about a choice. You have to make a decision. I'm going to persevere in spite of. I think about that woman with the issue of blood. She persevered in her faith because she knew if I can just touch something on this man. And I know I'm not supposed to be amongst the people because I'm unclean because of what she's dealing with, that issue of blood. It made her unclean. But her faith drove her. Her faith caused her to, my God, to press, to press through the fear, the doubt, the worry, and anything else the enemy might be trying to use to stop you. My brothers and my sisters, I'm here to tell you today, you can be more than a conqueror if you can just persevere in your faith. Oh, my God, my God. I'm here to tell you tonight the devil is a liar. I don't know what he's trying to trick you with, what he's trying to speak into your spirit. But my God, if you can just hold on, if you can keep pressing for the blessing, I'm here to tell you all things. I'm going to say it again, all things. All things mean everything is working together for the good. Count it all joy. That's what scripture says. Count it all joy. Again, I say rejoice. Lord Jesus. And I know it's kind of hard to rejoice when you're under the hammer or, or under the under pressure, under, under these different things that the enemy is using to try to stop you. But I'm here to tell you, you are more than a conqueror. And I'm here to tell you that you can make it. Matter of fact, you're going to make it. I'm not going to say you can make it. I'm here to tell you tonight, you're going to make it if you have that God kind of faith to believe. Are you hearing me, my brothers and sisters? If you can just hold on and believe. Look, 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 look at, look at this here. And uh, uh, that third essential ingredient is this. You have to persevere in prayer. I'm going to say that again. You have to persevere in prayer. 
you know, prayer is a weapon. And that weapon is able to give you victory. But many of us, and that's a major weapon of offense against the enemy. And this major weapon of offense is something that we're not using the way we should. See, until you can spend time with God in prayer. I'm not talking about getting up and giving, you know, and sometimes we can be so rushed. We can be so rushed that, you know, we just don't have that kind of time. But when is the last time you really got to that place where you were resting in God in prayer? Where you just wanted to just be in his presence and, and you just wanted to hang out with him. You wanted, you wanted to really hear from God. You know, many of us, we're in a, we're in a, a monologue with God. In other words, you know, we, 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 we're talking to God, but we're not staying down long enough to hear God speak back to us. God got a word for you. But sometimes we just have to be able to put ourselves on hold. We have to turn away from the television, turn away from the telephone and the, 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 the technology, the iPad and the iPhones, iPods and the computers and laptops and all of this other stuff that can seduce us. Many of us have been seduced by technology and don't realize we have spent more time with the technology than we spent time with the God who has given us life. Are you hearing me today? The God that we're looking to in time of trouble, the God that we're looking to in time of need, but how long, how much? And I'm not saying that you have to pray a long prayer every time. Sometimes you can just come with a little quick thing, and that's good. But you have to also get into the habit where I just want to spend some time with God. Why? Because I love him so much. Not because of what he's doing, but because of who he is. See, many of you, 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 know, you, you know, God says, be not deceived. He's not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. So you have to see it's important to persevere in prayer because you're sowing. You're sowing when you're praying. When you are praying, you are sowing. And what you sow, you're going to reap. There's going to be a harvest. There's going to be a return. And if you can just spend some time with God, Lord Jesus, I can't, exp I can't express it too much, the importance of spending time with God. You say you love him, but take an honest look at how much time you're willing to spend with him. How much time are you willing to spend with him in prayer? Because, you know, we go to church and we ask the pastor, we ask the minister, the evangelist, we want others to pray over us. But don't you know you have the power? You have the ability and God has given you the authority to use his name in prayer. God says no good thing will he withhold from those of us who are diligently seeking him, those of us who are persevering, those of us who know that we are somebody. I'm here to tell you tonight, you are somebody because God loves you and your life matters and it's time for you to persevere in prayer. You know, the Bible says only the truth that's going to set us free. And sometimes we have to be honest with ourselves because am I doing all that I can do to make this happen? Am I doing everything that I can do? Look what it says in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 in the 13th verse. Ephesians chapter 6 and 13. Here's what it says. Therefore, take unto yourself the whole armor of God that you may be able in the evil day and having done all to stand. See, see, you have to put on what? The whole armor of God. Not a piece of it, but the whole armor of God. Why? Because it's so very important that we understand what God is trying to say to us today in reference to the importance of putting on our armor. And then drop down to the 18th verse. Ephesians 6 and 18 says this, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. I don't know if you heard what I said. 
praying in the spirit. Now, I, I said to myself, why would Paul say praying in the spirit? Because many of us, we come in the flesh. We're praying out of our flesh. We're praying out of our emotions. We're praying out of our wants. We're praying, you know, we're praying, let's just say, those things that, would, that, that we might want God to do, but we're not being led by his spirit in our prayer. In other words, you want to come, and you want to come in spirit, and you want to come in truth. That's what scripture says, that when you come to God, come in spirit and come in truth. So meaning that when you want to pray to God, that means, Lord, Lord, I want to come to you in spirit. I, I'm, I'm not looking to get over. I'm not looking to manipulate you. I'm not looking to... To try to, I'm not looking at you as a as a as a, a magician. I'm not looking to you as someone that I can control or no 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 no. First of all, we have to always remember that the first sign of wisdom is to fear God. So when I come to God, I come humble, I come obedient, I come knowing that God holds me, He holds you in the hollow of His hand. And whatever the need is that's in your life, I'm here to tell you, God can and will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. See, but, but many of us, according to Matthew 6 and 33, it says, seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So are you seeking the kingdom of God first? Or are you seeking after your own needs and wants, things that you want to do, things you want to accomplish, the things that you want to make happen? Or are you concerned about what God would have you do today? See, and, and this is why prayer is so important because God will direct you. He will lead. He will guide you. You know, I was reading in my, in my studies this morning, I was reading about, about uh, Solomon and how God gave came to Solomon in a dream. The Bible says God came to Solomon in a dream and asked him what he want. And Solomon began to tell God, and Solomon was smart now because he didn't pray for himself. He prayed, for, he prayed that God would give him wisdom to make good judgment. And that's what we all need to do. We need to ask God for, for wisdom to make good judgment. And this is why prayer life is so, so very important. And if you know the rest of that story, you know that Solomon was made, the, he was considered the richest man, the smartest man, and God gave him, oh my God, so much more than what he even asked for. And I want you to know today, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Now, that was a lead-in to my fourth essential ingredient. And I'm going to give you this for tonight, and then we're going to come back next week, and we're going to finish up. But that next essential ingredient is this, persevering in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Saints, you have to be able to persevere in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You know, James 1 and 5 says this, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men, liberally, and upbraideth. In other words, there's no shortage. There's, he's not going to, you, you, you know, he's just going to give it to you freely. What we're saying is he's going to give it to you freely, and it shall be given unto him, unto you, her, whoever. In other words, God is not slack when it comes to blessing his people. And I want you to know today, tonight, whenever you're watching this program, that you have to persevere in wanting to know more about God. That's why no persevering in the word is so important. Persevering in prayer, persevering in an understanding that in your faith, understanding that God has put some things in place. Why? Because he want to bless you. Oh, my God. It is so very important that you understand the importance of being your true self. You don't want to live in this new year. You don't want to live any, any time in your life as a counterfeit. 
And we have to be able to, you know, the Bible says that we have to be able to examine ourselves to see if we're still in the faith. You know, because sometimes we can talk a good talk, but our walk is shaky. I want you to know today that God has purpose a great life for you, a great future for you. And in spite of what you might find yourself in today, I want you to know it's going to get better. Matter of fact, as I said earlier, it's better already. Why? Because you've already picked up four keys, four essential ingredients for turning your situation around. And I have four more for you next week. And if you can come back next week, we can wrap this thing up. And I'm here to tell you, you're going to be blessed. Let me pray for you now. All right? Father, we just want to thank you tonight. We want to thank you, Lord God, for just bringing a word tonight to remind us of the importance of being our authentic self. And Lord God, we can't do that without you. We need the help and guidance of your Holy Spirit. We're thanking you, Father God, for your word. We're thanking you for building our faith. We're thanking you, Father God, for reminding us of the importance of prayer. And we want to also thank you, Lord God, for opening a door that we are able now to receive more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on how to better live this life. Help us, Father God, to grow into that place where we can be those men and women you would have us to be. And whatever the struggle is, Lord God, in the life of your people, I pray that you put it under their feet. I pray that you would remove all fear, all worry, all doubt, and that you will cause that brother, that sister right there, I'm looking at you, to get up, Lord God, and know that all things are working together for the good. Lord, we love you tonight, and we thank you tonight for being patient with us. And Father God, I pray even now for a renewed spirit and attitude. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We love you here at God's Got a Plan, and we want you to succeed. And those of you wanting a daily bread, you know you can reach out. If you missed any part of this program, please look us up on YouTube, and you can follow this, pro, uh, this program and any other shows. I should say this show and any other shows you may be interested in seeing. And like I said, be with us next week. Because next week, I'm going to give you part two, and we're going to wrap this thing up. And it's going to be a gift to you from God's Got a Plan, from those of us with God's Got a Plan. This is our gift to you so you can step into that new year and be that man, that woman you want to be. We want you to be successful. We want you to prosper and be in good health. And we want you to be just blessed in this new year. The only way you can say you're blessed is when you're living the authentic life. That's what it's about, my brothers and sisters, being your authentic self. We love you now. Come back and see us again next week. And if you enjoy the program, tell a friend or a family member and sit down and watch this show with somebody. God bless you.